Behind me at the bottom is our TrueNAS scale box, the one that runs all of our storage between John and I here at Two Guys Tech. And today, I blew a drive. Courtesy of those Seagate Constellation 3 terabyte drives that are just so prone to failure. Anyway, I figured this would be a good opportunity to take you guys along with me on the journey of replacing that drive, doing it start to finish, and doing it the right way. So if that interests you, stick around. For the replacement drive of our scale host, we've chosen a Western Digital WD Red Plus drive to replace the failed Seagate Constellation disc in the host. The WD drive was chosen specifically for a few reasons. One, they're CMR or conventional magnetic recording drives, which will not degrade performance over time. And two, the RED Plus drives are NAS rated discs designed specifically for NAS workloads. If you're a Seagate fan, get yourself an Ironwolf, their equivalent. All right, before we do anything here, we need to log into our scale host and offline the failed disc. Once logged into our administration website, we can see in the storage card that our pool status is degraded. On the left, we'll click storage, and then over on the far right, we'll click the pool operations icon and select status. Here we have a full list of the disks in our host, and you can see that one's marked as unavailable. This is the failed disk we'll be replacing. To the right, we'll click the three dot ellipses and select offline. Then we'll confirm that we want to do this operation and click the offline button. Once that completes, we now see the disk status is offline. It's now time to pull the disk. Our next step is to remove the failed Constellation from the disk caddy and replace it with the new WD Red Plus drive. All right, now that's done, back in the host it goes. Now back to the scale UI, click on the three dot ellipses again and select replace. In the dropdown, we now see our newly inserted disk with the device name of SDN. Your device name will likely be different. We'll select that and click Replace Disk. This can take a bit, so let it complete. Once the operation is done, we'll get a confirmation pop-up letting us know we've successfully completed the replacement. It's that easy. Last thing to note, whenever you lose a disk and replace it in ZFS, the array needs to rebuild itself. This is called resilvering, and it can take a long time depending on a variety of factors. Your array size, the speed of your disks, and so on. Until resilvering completes, you may have performance degradation, so be aware. Once resilvering is completed, you should see a green check mark showing that the pool is healthy and you're back in business. Now for a bit of added fun, let's open up the failed Seagate drive and see if we can spot the issue with the disk. These Constellation 3TB drives are notorious for head crashes and they're well known for being unreliable after their 3 year warranty period. Now, keep in mind, the DOM or date of manufacture of this failed drive was 12-20-2015. So for it to last till early 2022, or a little over six years, is a surprise. Okay, after removing all of the screws and opening up the drive, we can see a very faint circular scratch in the middle of the top platter. So this leads me to believe that the drive was beginning to head crash. And that's backed up by the air filter in the drive. See how the little filter is dark colored on one side? That's the filter doing its job and picking up all the little bits of scraped off magnetic material from the glass platters in the drive. In a normal drive, this absorbent filter should be white on both sides. This is another Seagate Constellation 3TB that died in this host in October of 2021, just a few months ago. This head crash was an epic squealer. When it failed, the squealy noises of the head scraping against the platters was loud enough that you could hear it over the server's fans. It's a more extreme version of what happened with the most recent dead hard drive, but again, just shows you how these Seagate disks are failing. Don't get me wrong here, I'm equally pro Seagate even though we most recently bought WDs as replacements. Both Seagate and Western Digital make great NAS drives provided you pay attention to the fine print. WD, I'm looking at you. We use both Ironwolf and WD Red Plus drives in different boxes here, and the decision on which to purchase for us comes down to price per gigabyte over brand loyalty. Both brands have three-year warranties, compatible performance and lifespans, so choosing either is a safe bet for your NAS workload. Speaking of this true NAS scale box, check out this video right here where we walk you through the process of building this server out start to finish.